Yesterday we said a lot about inflammation. I introduced to some of you, maybe reminded others, about kynarenine. Remember kynarenine was the product of indolamine dioxygenase activation? So kynarenine is produced when tryptophan is shunted away from serotonin biosynthesis and instead towards this molecule kynarenine. So Ava Reininghaus, as a colleague of mine, we did this study in Austria. And what we did is we looked at our bipolar patients who were overweight, obese, compared them to normal weights and healthy controls. What we found was that the obese bipolar patient had elevated kynarenine, as you can see on the left. They had a uh, reduction in tryptophan as, as evidenced by an elevated kynarenine to tryptophan ratio. And, and for those of you who, like me, are particularly interested in the area of inflammation, neopterin is a product that's spilt into your blood by activated macrophages, and it's elevated. So the bipolar patient who is obese is more likely to have this inflammatory biosignature, and they're more likely to have those changes in their brain. Remember this slide differently? It looked different yesterday, but this is in fact showing the link between tryptophan and kynarenine, and obesity is shifting the biosynthesis away from serotonin towards kynarenine, which could go on to have toxic uh, metabolites like QA, that's quinolinic acid. Now, what does this actually mean in clinical settings? Everyone here today knows that in schizophrenia and in bipolar and in many subpopulations of major depression, the determinant of health outcome is cognitive function. Cognitive function is the principal determinant of health outcome for most of these very severe disorders and many of the common disorders. Bipolar patients evidence cognitive impairment even though they're no longer manic or depressed. What's interesting is that if you actually sit down with the first degree relatives of someone who has bipolar, a first degree relative who's unaffected, they also have cognitive problems. So this is part of the illness, we think. What we found, this is one of my graduate students, Christina Yim, she was the first to report that bipolar patients who are obese, they have even greater cognitive problems than people who are bipolar and normal weight. Said a slightly different way, the variance or the degree of change in cognition that was explained by obesity was as much as 30%. So patients in my office say to me, Dr. McIntyre or Roger when they're manic, they say, um, how in fact can I improve my thinking? Every patient's complaining of cognitive problems with mood disorders, you all know that, and we now have, this has been replicated now, some evidence to say what we thought was true, that something about your physical health is adversely affecting your cognitive performance. So this is, a, again, a real, a real plug for lifestyle and diet. 